Well, on our planet, the original self-replicating machines must have been a lot simpler than bacteria, but bacteria are the nearest idea we can get to what they might have been like. Here is a little view of bacteria reproducing. You can see how numerous they are. And each individual one of those bacteria is actually fairly complicated. Next picture, please. Um, there's a, the cell wall around it. It's got a chromosome of genetic material. It's not just a bag of fluid. It's got some complicated structure to it. And that is, the on, on, on Earth today, the sort of minimal self-replicating machine as we now know them. At some stage in the early history of life, things like bacteria, we should probably call them bacteria, ganged up together, came together and formed what we now call the eukaryotic cell. That's just a long word. It means the kind of cell that we're made of. Our cells are eukaryotic cells. So are plant cells, so are the cells of fungi and protozoa. It's now known, almost for certain, that the eukaryotic cell was formed by the ganging up of bacteria perhaps 2,000 million years ago. This model of a eukaryotic cell shows various bits like these mitochondria in orange, which are bacteria, or are at least linearly descended from ancient bacteria, and they go on reproducing all by themselves as though they were separate bacteria. Now, just as bacteria ganged up together to form a cell like that, so cells like that ganged up together to form larger units. And under this microscope here, uh, we have Volvox, which is a fairly simple kind of organism composed of gangs of cells, eukaryotic cells, formed into a hollow sphere. Would anybody like to come down and operate this microscope? Um, Yes, in, in the front row there. What's your name? Katie. Katie. Have you ever used a microscope before, Katie? No. no. Okay. Well, in there are some Volvox, and they're great big green globular things. And this is how you move the stage about. Come here, and then you can see. If you move that one there, it moves that way. If you move this one here, it moves that way. And I think... Oh, that, I seem to have found one for you. Try focusing there. There we are, away, the other way, I think. There we are, that's got it. Now, are we seeing that right? Um, good, well done, Katie, thank you very much indeed. Um, <laughs> what Katie's found is one Volvox. It's a globe of a few thousand, perhaps 1,000 cells, uh, and each one of those cells is a little separate entity with little hairs that beat called cilia round the edge, and the whole globe moves as if it was one organism. Now, Volvox is not our ancestor. Volvox is a modern animal, but it's possible that something like that originally gave rise to our ancestors. We are, after all, colonies of cells. And this ganging up together of cells to form larger organisms has proceeded to truly colossal lengths. I said that an elephant was a huge digression on a copy me program, and I really did mean huge, because whereas a Volvox has a few hundred or thousand cells, an elephant is made of about a thousand trillion cells. So if an elephant is a robot carrying its own blueprint about, it's an almost unimaginably colossal robot. Of course, it's not particularly colossal in absolute terms, I mean, it's not big compared with a star, but it is colossal compared with the DNA molecules that built it. To understand this, imagine that we humans set ourselves the task of building a great Trojan horse to carry ourselves about in. Well, since we built it, the horse would look like a robot. Uh, it would have uh, steel plates riveted together, and it would have television cameras for eyes. But how big would it be? Well, the answer is that if this horse was built by us to the same scale as we are built by our DNA, or a real horse is built by its DNA, then this horse would dwarf Mount Everest. So this is building on a truly colossal scale. A real living body, like a horse or like us, manages to be so big compared with the genes that built it because it grows by a very different process from the way a man-made machine would grow. 
a man-made machine is put together by people swarming all over it and riveting on plates of steel. But the special way of growing that living things have is very different. It's called exponential growth, or you could call it growing by local doubling. And here's how it works. <laughs>